एवरीबडी जैसे कि आज का टॉपिक है वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अपॉन एनिमल हैंडलिंग राइट सो जब हम फार्माकोलॉजिकल रिसर्च की बात करते हैं एनिमल हैंडलिंग प्लेज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल बिकॉज हम एनिमल्स को जब प्री क्लिनिकल स्टडीज के लिए वी नीड एनिमल एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन राइट सो दैट इज वाई एनिमल हैंडलिंग इज वेरी वेरी एसेंशियल नाउ इफ आई टॉक अबाउट कमिटी फॉर द कंट्रोल एंड सुपरविजन ऑफ एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन ऑन एनिमल्स सी सी एस सी एल so this is a committee that sets certain rules acts and guidelines that we have to follow while we are handling and performing experiments with animals right so isko pehle cpcsa bolte ab ye ccsa hai so they appoint the iaec committee institutional animal ethics committee so according to that committee aap uh, if you get approval for the animal studies you have to uh, follow certain protocols certain guidelines certain regulations while you are performing and dealing with animals so the three r's of animal research are reduce refine replace reducing the number of animals that are used jitne hum animals use kar rahe hain agar utni zarurat nahi hai so it's better that we reduce the number refining the process agar ho sake to non invasive methods adopt kare we should try that least harm is caused to the animals and replace If possible, we can replace the in vivo studies with in vitro, ex vivo, or in silico using certain computer softwares and algorithms that are based on AI. Which which animals we are most widely used? What are the most commonly used animals? So we use rodents, we use non rodents, and then we use certain other miscellaneous animals like zebra fish, which is now currently being very popular, chicken and pigeon and frog. on which we can perform other studies non rodents me there are rabbit dogs monkeys and pigs and in rodents we have mice rat gerbil guinea pigs hamster so chinese hamster ovary is widely used in guinea pig we use ilium mostly right so rat me we use uterus for spasmolytic activity and all rabbit is used for skin irritation test pyrogen test dress test so many other things so as a particular animals ke liye we need particular uh, particular uh, protocols and guidelines to be follow so these are the most commonly used experimentation animals albino so there are different uh, strains and there are different breeds so there are nude mice beige mice albino mice rats me vista rat c57 and th- there are different types of um, rats and different types of mice that are available in different strains and breeds so now if i talk about pharmacological experiments so they are of two types pre clinical and clinical in pre clinical testing we have in vivo in vitro in silico and in situ while in clinical testing we majorly perform on humans or pharmacological data is being generated so we will be focusing in this presentation about the pre clinical testing which is useful for drug discovery so what are the different parameters for animal handling एनिमल हैंडलिंग हम बेसिकली करते हैं सो दैट हम जब हम करते हैं तो हम उसके डिफरेंट पैरामीटर्स है जो आपको याद रखने चाहिए दैट शुड बी वेरी वेल नोन टू यू टाइप ऑफ डोजिंग वेदर यूर वेन यूर हैंडलिंग एन एनिमल यूर डोजिंग इज आई वी ओर एल एस सी इंट्रा मस्क्यूलर वॉट एवर टाइप ऑफ एनिमल कौन सा एनिमल हम यूज कर रहे हैं सो इज इट small animal large animal rat mice what is the age of the animal what is the gender of the animal male or female if it's female if it's on estrus cycle then there will be different uh, physiological parameters that will be uh, uh, recorded then the nature of the study so aapki study ka nature is it a prolonged study or a short term study so there are various oecd guidelines organization for economic cooperation development so there are 401 2 3 4 up to uh, 9 there are different guidelines and there is 420 which is for fixed dose uh, procedures and all so there are different guidelines for different toxicities testing so you need to know the nature of the study whether it is a pharmacological data or generation study or a toxicological data toxicokinetics dmpk studies etc grouping of animals so whenever you have issued animals right so there you have to compare so for the comparison you need a number of groups so that your statistical validation can be then further carried out so per se in which only the drug is given sham operated in which there is surgery operated model control group whereby the only the saline is given and test so test can be test group 1 test group 2 whereby we give different doses of that particular test 
substance. So that is what you call test group. Now when we talk about handling, acclimatization and all. So these are different factors that affect the animal behavior and whenever we are going to see behavioral assays or behavioral studies. So these are different kinds of um, parameters that we need to remember like handling, acclimatization, feeding, petting, bedding, environment, record maintenance, climate conditions, etc. So acclimatization is basically quarantine. So jab, uh, always put yourself in the place of an animal and then uh, understand how it might work. So jab aapko koi nahi jaga pe ralenge, to what will you do? You will start exploring. Vaisi, the animal starts rearing when it's put from laboratory from the animal house into your laboratory. So it has an alag, it has a different environment. Usko ek alag environment mila hai to, to see around things. So wo uske behavior pe usse alag alag effects aa sakte hai. So uske feeding, what kind of feeds it's to be given, petting. Always see that aap usko ek bar pet karo taki wo stress condition mein na hai. Because once it's in stress condition, the physiological parameters and the behavioral studies might be altered. So you need to always pet. It should feel safe. Ke wo aapke hato mein safe hai. Usko ye dhi bhanak nahi padni se that you are going to perform experimentation on that animal, right? Bedding. So there are so many litters. So you need to keep on changing the beds for the animals. Because they also need sanitary condition, hygienic conditions, right? Environment. So lux per hour. There is some lux per hour provisions for the animals. Just like we have. 12 hour day, 12 hour night cycle. So 24 hour cycle, chronopharmacological clock. Animals also have diurnal species, right? So humidity, noise, record maintenance. Once you get data, you need to record that data and then archive that data. So that is also very essential. What are the different routes of drug administration? So orally we have oral gavage needle. So this gavage needle is basically, uh, you. I will be showing all the video ahead of, of course. So gavaging needle may you basically instill the or you feed tube the particular animal with the help of a needle. Inhalation, the nasal technique for pulmonary drugs, IV, IM, IP, ID, SC, subcutaneous, intravenous, intramuscular, intraperitoneal, intradermal. So that are different routes, different angles and different requirements. Then we have topical. Topical is very essential because for skin latency test or certain drugs that are locally acting and all. So for that uh, topical studies are performed and majorly rabbit is used and sometimes for permeability studies we use goat skin and for certain different studies as well. Now for organ system experimentations. So there are different organ systems and which you can work on different diseases like nervous system. You can work on neurodegenerative disease, Alzheimer, Parkinson. Huntington, ALS, M uh, multiple sclerosis, digestive system, you can work upon peptic ulcers, you can work upon constipation, diarrhea, reproductive system, you can work upon infertility, embryonic toxicity uh, or testis ovaries. There are so many different organs that are associated in digestive system, small intestine, large intestine, stomach, in nervous system, you have brain, spinal cord. In respiratory, again, you have a different um, uh, pulmonary drugs that are used for COPD, asthma, CVS, you have angina pectoris, arrhythmia, myocardial infarction, hypertension, special senses, so you have eyes, skin, nose. If you all have any doubts, just uh, keep on typing your doubts in the comment section. I'll be answering them at the end of the session, okay? Blood samples. So once the, you have an animal, you need to collect the blood samples, right? So the collection of that blood sample is very, very essential. So for that, we have different techniques that require anesthesia and some techniques that do not require anesthesia. So Cephanus vein is the most widely used uh, technique for blood collection. And when we talk about blood collection requiring anesthesia, so we have tail snip, which is most commonly used. And I'll be showing you all video ahead in, the, in this particular presentation only. Then we have marginal ear vein this is widely used technique in rabbits and then we have jugular vein these are three commonly used techniques terminal procedures whereby we sacrifice the animal so we have cardiac puncture retro orbital and posterior vanakawa so these are different techniques whereby we have terminal procedure of the animal sacrifice and blood collection retro orbital or orbital sinus is most widely used because Sabse zada jo blood ka amount hota hai, you get it from this particular technique only. So that is why orbital sinus is very very uh, commonly used. Now this is a video that uh, I'll be playing at the end so for your convenience because uh, it, it represents how how is the action of a particular restraining and how do you collect the blood from a 
particular rat or a mice. So here you can see uh, it, this is a rat inside a restrainer. You slowly wash it with uh, the tail with ethanol. Then you massage it. Massage Q karte hai because massaging helps you so that uh, all the there is congestion of the veins and they appear superficially. Then from 2 to 3 centimeter from the tip, you gently press. After pressing, there is congestion. You insert or incise in the needle or the cannula. And then that cannula is in connection with the coagulant tube. Anti, with the tube that is for blood collection containing anticoagulants like EDTA. Why is it necessary? Obviously, blood clot ho jayega. You won't be able to perform your histological or sorry your any studies that are related to physiological parameters like if you want to check proteins or any other presence of any other nutrients or substance in blood it would be difficult so see can you see how the blood is being collected over here from the tube so this is a video from professor Safsan Ab abdul fato i have obtained this from youtube um whatever. so you can see how this is um, the blood is being collected from the tailwind List of equipments and devices. So, there are different equipments like HbA1c analyzer, which is a glycosylated hemoglobin. So, you estimate blood glucose. Hematology for hematological parameters like CBC, WBC, platelets, RBC. ELISA plate leader for antigen antibody interaction. Centrifuge. So, centrifuge is for uh, uh, separating the supernatant and decanting the fluid so that all your RBC, WBC platelets are precipitated. ESR. Erythrocyte sedimentation rate analyzer. This is very useful for infectious diseases and all. So, this is a very important parameter, ESR. Then you have hemoglobin meter. Then you have incubators for appropriate environment. Then you have cryostat microtome. So, microtome is a device or a, a technique in which you, you, you cut down the tissues that are embedded in the paraffin. So, many a times, you can see cancers, mein, human mein, biopsy, mein, they take out uh, tissue of uh, the sample and then they put it in a cryostat microtome because it's, it should be in the freezed condition. So, microtome is basically for sectioning of the tissue. And then you have water bath which is very again very essential. So, if I talk about certain studies that you can perform uh, for animals, you, there are behavioral assays. So, sensory motor. Sensory motor may we have allodynia which is um, widely used. So, plethysmometer is basically for checking uh, ox pyrometry te like technique. So, it is for any uh, diseases associated with respiratory system. Allodynia, may we have physical allodynia, chemical allodynia, we have electrical allodynia, we have vibrational allodynia as well, we have acoustic allodynia as well, noisy. Then we have chemical allodynia, like we use acetone. So, acetone is widely used, known as a cold allodynia. But if you have ice you will feel cold, right? Why you will, will you feel cold? It is a different sensation, if it is a different nociception. So, similarly, allodyne, uh, that uh, nociception is appeared by acetone. And then you have hot allodynia as well, uh, whereby we use Rendell, Sileto, Hargreaves, hot plate method, one fray. These are all methods for sensory method testing. Then for affective behavior, or you can say for diseases that are Alzheimer, Parkinson, uh, depression, anxiety, epilepsy. We have light and dark box test. We have elevated plus maze. That is plus maze is bhul bhulaya. So, the animal ko kitna time lagta hai bahar aane mein. Then there is Morris water. Passive avoidance test, aggression test, uh, tail suspension test, which is widely used for depression, tail suspension, forced swim test. So, ye kafi important test. Hai. Open field test, aap animal ko open field mein chhod dete and then you see that how much time it is taking to reach to the flag or something, koi na koi object. Pe. Learning and memory, again we have Barnes maze, we have T maze, novel arm recognition, novel object recognition, that is Y field test, we bolte hai. So, these are most commonly used learning or memory tests that is useful. And Morris Langendorf is widely used for your cardiovascular parameter testing. Then there's an anesthesia chamber. So, either isoflurane or any other anesthesia is uh, given. So, we don't have to inject the end to the animal. And just keep the animal in the chamber and it will be anesthetized automatically. Stereotaxy, electroconversometer to develop seizures in animals, pole clump, uh, anesthesiometer, 
and then there is organ bath whereby a response is obtained those response curve you can plot then uh, on the uh, using with the help of frontal lever and it is obtained on a sherrington cylinder rota rod so in this there is a rod animals are placed and the grip strength of the animal is checked actophotometer so these are all for pain motor coordination activities and all her greaves and all these are all useful for a similar purpose now if i talk about the different types of studies that you can perform so biochemical histological assays assay may you can perform bioassays histological studies may you can perform certain uh, tissue studies on animals then biochemical assays may you can perform various biochemical estimation protein bradford's ninhydrin biuret folin cocalcio lori glucose estimation may you can measure using different glu uh, glu uh, god pod method and all so there are so many different biochemical estimation that you can do for using animals now if i talk about four types of restraints four types of restraints what is restraining first of all aap kabu mein karte ho animal ko you immobilize it you try to keep it under your control so there is manual chemical combination method and non contact method so in manual method there are devices like restrainers in chemicals we have minor tranquilizers and combination we use a mixture of both of them when the time of the surgery or your experiment is prolonged now these are images of few cages that i'll show you so the whenever we are performing experimentation so we have multiple groups of animals how do we locomote them unko ka handle kaise kare so we have cages trolleys in these trolleys because you cannot give more stress to the animals so uh, that is why these trolleys are useful cage and restrainer now cage this kind of cage is there so this see over here there is a bottle uh, there is a different uh, opening for bottle and a different feeding tube a feeding um, a cavity whereby there is feed given to the animal and this is the closed cage open cage system is also there open field whereby the animals are left open then these are the images of restrainer this is a bag in which you upside down place the animal which is the tail outside and the face of the animal is on the other side this is a restrainer so uh, of course over here it, uh, we don't have to kill the animal we just have to restrain it so there are see over here can you see there are certain perforations holes for the breathing so that the breathing is not stopped it's just restrained now this is a particular uh, video that represents how do you scrub from a particular rat or a mice so this feeding is very very important so this cage is we you place the particular mice or a rat on the cage and once you remove it it should not be uh like mishandle it should not be for more longer time allowed to just roam you have to keep it on that particular cage for some time and after keeping that uh, it on the particular cage you just have to scruff it the loose skin near the ears you have to catch hold of so there are different methods c method v method you have to catch like this and slowly turn it upside down so and uh, so in this your thumb your index finger and your ring finger plays a role because you keep the tail between your near your ring finger your index finger and thumb is used for scruffing so see how he has scruffed the animal over here so this is again a video that i have obtained from youtube this is a image of a cage so how the cage this is um, a number of animals in the cage should not be overcrowded if it's overcrowded then there will be a lot of problem so over here can you see there is a single um rice over here there are two three if if there is infectious disease it will immediately spread and contagious disease right so it's better that you take care of the animals appropriately and this is a playful cage so here can you see the different activities there there is a roller here there is a slide like structure ladder rods so this there can be different cage designing as well handling and restraining of animals it's an art to handle and restrain the particular animals so these are the oral feeding tubes see can you see over here you need a glove and your oral gavage how this is being feeded by into the mouth oral cavity subcutaneous injection nothing just pick up a mice grab the loose skin then at a 45 degree or 30 degree angle slightly disinfect the area and slowly insert the or instill the injection and a gauze needle this is how you inject a subcutaneous injection intraperitoneal in the peritoneum cavity instill the particular injection now there are four quadrants right left upper right lower right lower left upper left so you have to check which quadrant you are targeting and only the tip of the needle must penetrate not the entire needle and because it's abdominal cavity it might lead to certain refluxes so it's better that we just uh, choose a particular quadrant and 
quickly see and for if you want to see whether you have penetrated or not into other cavity you can just perforate it and check whether if it's blood coming then you means you have damaged the blood vessels or the vasculature system now how do you collect blood so this is the same method that i have shown for tail snip method and all whereby sniffs this is a rat and the sniffing method and this is a method whereby you are orbital retro orbital so a capillary tube is taken and slowly it is injected into the conjunctival cavity of the animal and there is immediate usher stream of blood that comes out this is by cardiac puncture which is invasive method so we have a posterior manakawa cardiac puncture whereby you disinfect the thorax cavity um, and thorax area and then you check the palpitations of the heart just like you check over here on carot carotid artery and all so you check the perforations uh, you check the palpitations and then finally you insert a 24 gauge needle there are different gauge needles available 19 21 but 24 is most commonly used if you talk about saphenous vein so saphenous vein you can see over here you need to firstly shave the particular part or remove the hair and then it using a small scalpel you can uh, just uh, shave that uh, particular part of and then apply some vaseline and then clean the area and finally disinfect and finally insert the needle that is required uh, this is about the intramuscular injection in rabbits and subcutaneous injection look at the way how they are injecting how they are treating and uh, rabbits uh, is a bigger animal so it is to be handled with care if i talk about blood collection from carotid artery you can see this is a very deep process but just like in humans we have you know uh, you would have heard about there are stitches take lage hai. so there are catheters there are sutures in rats and mice as well so this is how you firstly anesthetize restrain shave a particular part uh, or cut open in size uh, using a scissor or a forceps just uh, in, in, uh, enlarge the cavity and finally isolate the nerve and then uh, the, like in diabetes if it's nephro uh, if it's neuropathy so we uh, uh, target the sciatic nerve so similarly there are different nerves and different um, particular uh, uh, target nerves that we are targeting for particular experimentation right here you can see uh, a particular image of the carotid arteries and uh, how it is being uh, carried out the process is being carried out zebra fish so i have focused upon this uh, in this experimentation about zebra fish because zebra fish is widely used model nowadays and it is used for toxicological pharmacological data molecular screening genome based assays neurological disease, teratogenic effects, cancer research, etc. So this is her, the image of a zebra fish. Now, why do we use zebra fish? Because least amount of drug is required, cost effective, gene expression studies. You can perform knock-in and knock-out studies both uh, for experimentation like in obesity or in condition like hemophilia and all. So you need certain knock-in and knock-out studies blood brain barrier permeability studies pkpd diurnal species as i mentioned 20 uh, 24 hour cycle 12 hours light 12 hours day cycle so it is better than any other in vitro screening model now animal handling is also it is essential that you rem uh, that you understand the experimental procedure and a protocol while using a particular animal model so whenever you're using a particular animal you need to set up an experimental design what kind of and you need to define your research objectives suppose i'm working on diabetes so i need to define that diabetes experimentation protocol for diabetes ethical consideration must be followed glp oecd ich ich s5 s s2 if i'm performing any toxicological data on teratogenicity that is reproductive toxicity genotoxicity etc housing feeding condition now this is a model for zebra fish but i'm in generally talking it should be you should be well versed with the housing feeding nutrition and a different uh, temperature that uh, um, you know ventilation process for the animal for the well-being so that it can be under non-stress condition then allocating the experimental groups you divide the groups and ensure randomization randomization is essential for avoiding outliers or avoiding any other biasness biasness matlab any other partiality in the suppose if you pehle se know that ha ye ye group ye hai so what is the use of the experimental data so biasness ko avoid karne ke liye and errors ko minimize karne ke liye we perform randomization method randomization replication blocking these are three techniques rrb then uh, we set the conditions 
so there are different conditions that are required like for for performing studies for teratogenicity so is it are you performing at the embryo stage or are you performing at the uh, uh, at the lactation stage at the gestation stage um, at the developmental stage there are different exposure conditions and different exposure stages then treatment well, if you are giving a treatment what drug are you giving is there any concomitant drug given uh, what is the different methods for administration and then you monitor the particular results once you obtain the results you can perform behavioral studies molecular analysis social behavior is widely used for depression molecular analysis imaging techniques there are different imaging techniques like pet positron emitron tomography positron emission then there is spec single photon emission computed tomography then there is ct scan mri for animals also we have such imaging techniques so this is what is important then we have data analysis so data analysis say we perform ANOVA test we perform F test right uh, T test whenever you perform a test you have obtained the results how will you confirm how will you validate so validation of result is obtained by statistical analysis so this is important about the data analysis then results and conclusions you can perform different result uh, you can uh, perform different experiments obtain different results and reach out to different conclusions and your discussion part is the main part your abstract in a discussion is the main part that is read by any researcher in a particular paper so you need to set it well and reporting after reporting your documentation must be in archival uh, it should be appropriately followed uh, following all the uh, good documentation practices and should uh, performing uh, you should be having an idea about the SOPs, standard operating procedures while you're dealing with the experiments and uh, this is how you establish any particular protocol for any particular experiment now if i talk about what are the different uses of animal handling and how can you which all testing procedures you can do you can check out on any system cardiovascular neurological nephrological hepatological hematological uh, any system endocrinological you pick out a system reproductive system digestive you pick out a system you get any disease you work on it you establish a protocol so you can perform anti-cancer studies you can perform genetic studies cancer Alzheimer, Parkinson, analgesic, anti-inflammatory, uh, anti-convulsants, that is uh, anti-epileptics, mating behaviors, lactation, peptic ulcer studies, constipation, diarrhea, Crohn's disease, IBD, hepatotoxicity, you can perform bioassays, uh, then there is a new concept of radio ligand binding, fluorescence binding, whereby you can observe fluorescence, you can perform tunnel assay for uh, checking out the apoptosis necrosis, confocal microscopy. There are different diagnostic techniques whereby and imaging techniques for particular animals. So these are different uses, hypersensitivity reactions, bronchodilators, vaccines. You can also uh, use to check the efficacy, safety and efficacy. These are two major parameters for any particular drug to be approved by the US FDA and uh, after phase three. So you preclinical establishment of the safety and efficacy will help you to get a better clearance from the FDA as well. So DRACE test, uh, as I mentioned about cosmetics, glaucoma test, uh, glaucoma drugs testing, capillary permeability, so anticoagulants, fibrinolytic agents, hemostatic agents. You can check they are particular. You can screen these drugs. Now this is an image that is a one-to-one -one comparison. So based on the different models, based on the different lifespan, you can choose a particular animal. Suppose if you are choosing diabetes, so six months, five months, it takes for the diabetes protocol to be established because streptozotocin, alloxan-induced diabetes is not that easier. It takes time. There is diet-induced as well, diabetes, high glucose diet and all, high carbohydrates and all. So that is very important that you know that which kind of study you are using so that you can choose an animal accordingly, right? So like C57 mice is most widely used for cancer studies. So carcinogenicity testing is mostly done on C57 mice. So you need to know certain physiological parameters like heart rate, blood pressure and all that because that might help you ahead. And these are the references that I have adopted for making this particular presentation. And um, you can also look on these sites and these papers for more details upon animal experimentation and animal handling. And these are my credentials for my social media account. So you can contact me via my academia, ResearchGate, LinkedIn, 
uh, Instagram or YouTube channel. I have my own YouTube channel named Payam Bora. You can just type this name and you can connect with me via there. So uh, I'm a pharmacologist. So I hope that I'll be able to uh, impart more knowledge and learn as well. So it's a process of learning. So if you all have any doubts, you can uh, reach back to me. I'll be sharing this particular links with your coordinator so, so that she can put it in the description section for you all. And thank you so much for attending this webinar. Now I'm open to any questions. If you all have questions, you all can drop in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to answer it. Thank you so much, everybody.